Hi guys, just a hopefully fairly quick video to show you how to install Autodesk Inventor at home so you can do all your lovely CAD work at home and not have any excuse for not being able to hand it in. Um, unfortunately Inventor is a bit of a pain in the backside to download. They do make it free for students and it used to be really easy to download but for some reason it seems to uh, have all sorts of issues. Uh, there are several ways to do it. Some will just work depending on your setup at home and others won't. Generally if you've got Windows 7 it goes really smoothly, if you've got Windows 8 it tends to be a bit of a pain in the backside and you've got to remember to download uh, various different parts before it will work. Uh, incidentally all the downloads you need are on the student drive at school in the Tech Mr. Winter folder so if you're a student of mine you'll know where to find that. I can point you to it and you can bring in a memory stick. So there, It's about 4 gigabytes of data you've got to download so you may want to save your bandwidth and, and do it that way. Anyway, uh, it starts off by going to your favourite browser, type in Students Autodesk, uh, use Google, don't use Bing, it's rubbish, uh, and you, this first hit that comes up, free student software downloads, that's the one you want. So load that up, go to uh, Secondary Students, so I'm just going to check I'm actually recording this, yeah I am, and here we go, you've got all the software, now they do tons of stuff um, the one we're using at the moment we care about is Inventor Professional and you will have to create an account, okay, now you might have seen it just flash away, that's because I've already signed in, uh, you won't have an account yet unless you've already done this so create an account, I've got a feeling you'll need to use your school email address because we have uh, we have the, the company software so we kind of get our license extended it may work with other email addresses, I don't know, but try your school one for starters. Uh, create that, they'll send you a login, you'll need to register and then come back here and sign in, okay? Once you've signed in, you'll get it looking like this, and it'll say choose your version. Now, although 2015 is available, as of the date I'm recording this video, we're still using 2014 at school. Uh, download that version unless I tell you we're on a different version at school, because I ain't recording this video again. Uh, unless you're German or Spanish, pick English, funnily enough. Uh, this bit, if you're not computer savvy, in most computers nowadays are 64-bit, but if you've got quite an old machine, it's 32-bit. Um, I would go with 64-bit and download it. If you're not sure, you can always go to my computer and system properties, and it will tell you here, see, mine is a 64-bit. Okay, it will tell you if it's 32. So make sure you do that. Right. Uh, what will happen then is you'll get um, this serial number, product key, um, I don't know if I should be showing that on the internet, but to be honest it generates a brand new one every time. So yeah, you'll get uh, the serial number and product key, they do email it to you, but just in case it might be worth taking a note of that, and then you go to install now, um, except you have to go through all this jazz. Now this is a bit where it goes wrong sometimes, it will say download this file, you download it and then in theory um, you download that file, run it and it's got its own built in installer which should go and download everything else for you. The problem is it doesn't always work. Um, the reason for that is sometimes some internet browsers have got like a pop up blocker that stops um, pop up windows from downloading and that there's actually like two files I don't want to get into this this is really dull um, but that's what causes it to go wrong so you can do this download it um, I'm just gonna pause it and wait for this to finish I won't bore you with watching it actually sorry I should have mentioned um, if it's just sitting on this window make sure you've actually run the installer package so go to wherever your internet browser downloads stuff to and run that file let it install Right, it should come back with a screen looking similar to this and if you're lucky and uh, Autodesk have sorted out their website then it should download the entire thing which I said is about 4 gigabytes. Um, you'll see there's a fairly small small download to start with, 160 meg. Um, that's not the whole program. I've had it crash at this stage before, I've had it crash halfway through the larger download but um, just bear with it there is another method I'm going to show you if this doesn't work so um, if this all goes wrong for you just fast forward the video okay right after that initial bit you should get this option 
Um, you don't need to mess around with tools and utilities, just go install on this computer. Right, now when it eventually gets through that, yours won't look like this. Obviously on my computer I've already got Inventor 2014 installed, so it's saying tick already installed. Uh, it will ask you, on your left it will have a whole bunch of different programs. I would recommend you install all of them. Um, you'll probably never use half of them, but, but when I've done this in the past, the download has freaked out or gone wrong when I've told it to ignore the packages that I don't want. So the easiest way is just leave everything ticked, click install. That should hopefully do it. Okay. Um, anyway, if it installs and when it installs, you should end up with a screen that looks like the one I'm about to show you. Right, uh, yeah, so once you've installed it and load the software, yours will probably won't come up with this window straight away. It'll probably ask you to activate the product. Now, if you remember when we went on the website and we got the serial number and product key, uh, you'll need to enter that and just click through. It's fairly straightforward, and that will activate the software. And once it's fully loaded and activated, you should get this window appear. Uh, before you do any of my other videos on how to use Inventor, I do mention this at the start of one of them, but make sure you go and do this. Go down to configure default template and make sure you, it will be ticked as inches and ANSI because this is an American company. We don't work in inches, that's stupid. We use millimeters and pick ISO. Okay, Set it to that and then everything you draw, um, and obviously click, I've got to click over it, but anything you draw or model will be in the metric system, not the stupid American Imperial or whatever they like to call it, feet and inches system. Okay, Right, hopefully that worked for you. If that didn't and you couldn't get to this stage and you just kept getting failed downloads, there is another method. Right. Um, the other method involves ignoring uh, inventors nice fancy download manager which doesn't actually do its job properly and instead there's a thing you can google called inventor virtual agent um, if you're using google this should be the link um, I, there's probably an easier one but you know follow that okay um, if your screen looks like this you're doing well and then click the hyperlink to the autodesk virtual agent this is like uh, an easier way of getting it right so you can go through here download links uh, and then you've just got to find the product so it's inventor products in Autodesk inventor just the standard one 64-bit uh, part one and part two okay so download part one um, this is a better way of getting hold of the two big files I'm not going to bother downloading it because I don't want to fill up my hard drive but download that and then download part two which is the smaller one once they've downloaded, if you go to wherever your downloads are, and I think it's the smaller one that you run, that will take you through the same process that we just went through at the start of the video. Um, hands up if you're using Windows 8. If you are, you're a fool. You should have got rid of it. It's rubbish. Sorry, but I, I did test it. Um, if you did, you'll also need to download the service pack uh, for the program to work and install that as well. I'm going to pause the video while I remember where that is. Oh, well that was easy enough to find. Um, I just googled Inventor Service Pack 1. Conveniently, 2014 Service Pack 1 appeared. It's probably the most popular one. Follow that link, and you've got two here. Uh, if you know anything about computers, basically if it's got X64, that means it's designed for a 64-bit operating system. We talked about that at the start. If it's got X86, that's the old school 32-bit. So download whichever one is appropriate to your computer, most likely 64 and then install that as well. That's only if you're on Windows 8. Mind you, it doesn't do any harm to do it on uh, Windows 7 as well because you'll get any bug fixes that that includes. Okay? I believe there's even a service pack 2 somewhere, but I don't think you actually need to install that. All right, That took 10 minutes to explain how to download it, um, and that was with a lot of pausing. It probably will take you several hours if you include all the download time, but um, the good news is once you've got it, you've got this software for I think a three year license and it's a really good bit of software, I promise you. It just takes a bit of skill to master it, okay? Any problems? Uh, if you're my students you know where to email me and yeah, there you go.